With only days left till Isaac Cruz faces Valenzuela in the ring, there have been talks of who will come out with the win. And while many of us see Cruz dominating, others like Eddie Hearn do not see Cruz winning. The first interesting pick came from Floyd Mayweather. Floyd has always been impressed by Cruz's resilience and determination, some traits that he believes will secure Cruz a victory. Cruz is a tough guy and I see him winning against Valenzuela, Mayweather stated. His support for Cruz comes as no surprise, given Cruz's strong showing in his last major bout. Cabrera's gonna have to throw some big pop. Cabrera might be hurt! Cabrera might be hurt! The body followed by a left hook upstairs. Reflecting on Cruz's previous fight with Gervonta Tank Davis, Mayweather shared his thoughts on Cruz's performance. This guy was a complicated opponent and he came to press and fight, Floyd said, adding to Cruz's aggressive style and endurance. What's interesting is that Mayweather has previously even acknowledged that if he had faced Cruz during his prime, knocking him out wouldn't have been a certainty, saying, probably if I had faced him in the prime of my career, I wouldn't have knocked him out either. We got these judges in the fight game right now. These fight judges. This came after Cruz's performance with Tank. Despite Cruz's solid effort, Floyd made it clear that Gervonta Davis was the better fighter in their matchup. We all know that Tank gave boxing lessons to this kid, Floyd commented. He acknowledged that Cruz landed some good punches and was aggressive, but emphasized that it wasn't enough to win the fight. It's not all about giving great fights here, but he was clearly defeated. Floyd also mentioned that Cruz was aware he didn't win as the decision was not in his favor. He knows he didn't win. It was an easy fight from my point of view, Floyd said, referring to the judges' scorecards which heavily favored Davis. It was only about three or four rounds at most that guy won, but for the other eight, he was clearly outplayed by Tank. Being biased, if I'm 100, Tank got his ass whooped, I'm gonna say, you know what? He got his ass whooped. Easy fight. Even though Cruz didn't come out on top, it is his resilience that Floyd sees. Mayweather addressed the expectations people had for Davis to knock Cruz out, pointing out that such criticisms were unfair. People expected him to knock him out, but because he didn't, some think he lost and that's real crap, Mayweather added. We can't just ignore that Floyd admitted that even he himself would not be able to knock out Cruz. And it's the same Cruz getting in the ring with a less experienced opponent. Versus power, he's got a great right hook and, and that the one crowd may have anticipates Javon. Davis has death. Well, at the end of the fight, Cruz earned respect not only from the audience, but also from Davis himself. Gervonta even told Cruz that a new star had been born that night. As Gervonta said, today a star was born and we made a champion like him look bad, Cruz commented after the fight. Till now, it has always been said that Cruz was the best opponent Tank has ever faced. And perhaps that's why Tank has never gone through with the idea of a rematch. We want the rematch with Javante Davis. Uh, these fans have been great, and that's why. But even with that, Tank still has respect for Cruz, and he expressed the same in his prediction on the upcoming fight. Tank added to Floyd's thoughts when he commented on Cruz's upcoming bout against Jose Rayo Valenzuela, saying, no chance, I think Cruz knocks him out cold. There's no way that fight will go more than five rounds. Definitely Cruz will take him out quick. Gervonta's words highlight the respect he has for Cruz's power and skills in the ring. Meanwhile, Isaac Cruz isn't waiting around for recognition. With Vasily Lomachenko seemingly hesitant to face Gervonta Davis in November, Cruz has made it clear that he's ready to step up. However, before that, he needs to focus on his match against the dangerous Valenzuela on August 3rd, a fight that promises to be a significant challenge. Cruz, the WBA junior welterweight title holder, is not taking Valenzuela lightly. It is surprising because I thought it was almost a done deal. But then again, if he didn't want to fight him, you've got to respect Lomachenko's decision, Cruz said, reflecting on Lomachenko's decision to step away from the potential fight with Davis. Yes, I, I, I can fight Gervonta, but I will not pursue nobody. Then 
I will be focused now on this time for Valenzuela, and I will f fight everybody that... Cruz added, and then that just means that I'm in top condition to be able to be considered to fight Gervonta on whatever date is available at the end of the year, and if it happens, I will be ready. Get everybody. Yeah. Come on, bro. Who you phone here, bro? The talks for a Gervonta Davis versus Vasily Lomachenko fight had been going on for weeks. Representatives from PBC and Top Rank, along with Lomachenko's manager Aegis Klimas, were working hard to set up what could have been one of the biggest fights of 2024. Apparently, they aimed for a 135-pound unification match in November in Las Vegas. One more time, please. Tank Davis. Tank Davis called. Called out Lomachenko. However, the plan fell apart when Klimas announced that Lomachenko would not be fighting this year, choosing instead to spend time with his family. I don't know, but you got to respect his decision, Cruz commented. I don't know what other names you can bring to the table for Gervonta, but I only hope it can be attractive to the fans. When did I see that we made a star is Pitbull Cruz? That's the only one that I see. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm looking at, I'm looking at the, 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 the guys, the two. We can all agree that Cruz has an interesting history with Davis. He stepped in as a late replacement for Rolando Raleigh Romero in December 2021 and gave Davis one of the toughest fights of his career, going the distance and losing a close decision. And ever since, Cruz has been loud about wanting a rematch. So, even if Tank is giving props to Cuz in the upcoming fight, Cruz is not settling for that. He is still looking for the rematch. But while his eyes are looking at Tank, Teofimo Lopez is after him. Teofimo Lopez has made it clear that he sees Isaac Pitbull Cruz as the superior fighter in the ring. Speaking about Cruz's upcoming bout, Teofimo confidently stated, Cruz is a beast. Who's the other kid? Yeah, he's not going to have a chance against Cruz, man. We all know that. This endorsement from Teofimo showed his belief in Cruz's abilities. So much so that Teofimo added, that's why I want to fight him, indicating his desire to challenge Cruz in the future, which highlights the high regard he holds for Cruz's fighting prowess. I'm ready for it, man. I'm excited. I, now I know how to face fighters like that even better on a better standpoint. You know what I mean? Just more conditioning, more track work, and that's it. You know, I think this gives everybody a more opportunity to jump that gun. But let's see how they do once we start clacking them up. Teofimo's admiration for Cruz's skills comes at a time when his own career is at a crossroads. After his recent victory over Steve Claggett in Miami, Teofimo faced the media looking somewhat battered but unapologetic about his performance. I don't care how I look, as long as my hand gets raised at the end of it, Teofimo said, emphasizing his focus on winning rather than aesthetics. His promoter, Bob Arum of Top Rank, seemed less than thrilled with the outcome despite Teofimo securing the win. Bob said I did well. He didn't look too happy. F it. I'm your only last star available, Teofimo said, addressing Aram's visible disappointment and his own importance within the promotion. I'm not on that side. We're on this side over here. So, um, you know, I wish nothing but the best for these guys. The fight against Claggett was supposed to be a showcase for Teofimo, a chance to impress and solidify his standing. However, the performance fell short of expectations, raising questions about Teofimo's current form and future potential. At 26, Teofimo has faced scrutiny over whether he still has what it takes to compete at the highest levels, especially in the stacked 140 and 147 pound divisions. Aram had hinted at a possible move up to welterweight for Teofimo, potentially challenging Brian Norman Jr. for the WBO title. But after his struggle against Claggett, the idea of Teofimo facing a top-tier opponent like Norman Jr. seems risky. For Aram, who has been subsidizing Teofimo's career, the situation poses a dilemma. Teofimo's recent performances suggest he may not be able to compete with the elite fighters in higher weight classes, which could limit his marketability and fan appeal. Aram might be considering an exit strategy for Teofimo, looking to either reinvigorate his career with strategic matchmaking or cut losses and focus on other fighters. They all box. Crawford boxes, whether it's Orthodox, whether it's freaking Southpaw, he boxes. He doesn't really slug in there. So this is why I do these type of fights for a reason. 
A potential fight between Teofimo and Isaac Cruz has been floated as a possibility, with Teofimo himself expressing readiness for the challenge. F yeah, I'm ready for it, he said when asked about facing Cruz. I'm 26, I'm still learning in this game, Teofimo added, showing his willingness to continue evolving as a fighter. If the matchup with Cruz doesn't materialize, Aram may consider other avenues. Keyshawn Davis or Raymond Muratala could be viable opponents for Teofimo, offering a chance to reignite his career while simultaneously promoting up-and-coming talents. These potential fights would not only provide Teofimo with a platform to prove his mettle, but also help build the profiles of these younger fighters. Ryan Garcia was also not left behind in the line of comments. He recently shared his thoughts on Isaac Pitbull Cruz's upcoming fight against Jose Valenzuela, expressing strong confidence in Cruz's abilities. Isaac Cruz is going to win, no doubt. He's too powerful and relentless for Valenzuela to handle. Garcia's praise didn't stop there. He further emphasized Cruz's strengths by saying, Cruz will dominate this fight. His pressure and aggression are unmatched, and I don't see Valenzuela lasting long in the ring with him. This endorsement from a fellow boxer highlights the growing reputation of Cruz as a formidable force in the ring. So you said, I However, while Garcia is at that, Cruz, currently the WBA 140-pound champion, has his sights set on more than just his next fight. During a press conference in Manhattan, New York, where he announced his title defense against Valenzuela on August 3rd, Cruz shifted his focus to Ryan Garcia's lack of discipline. Cruz criticized Garcia for missing weight by three, two pounds at a recent weigh-in, labeling him as frivolous and lacking seriousness. Ryan Garcia doesn't take things seriously, Cruz said, pointing out Garcia's unprofessionalism. Even when he comes to the weigh-in, he's overweight by three pounds. He needs to be more focused on training and more serious. This isn't the first time Garcia has called out Cruz, especially after his victory over Devin Haney. Cruz, with a calm demeanor, acknowledged the frequent challenges from Garcia. It's not the first time, Cruz remarked. He said he wants to fight many times. I'm ready and I want to fight him. Cruz's readiness to take on Garcia shows his confidence and willingness to face top contenders in the division. I'm ready and champion now and I, I am be ready for everyone that, who wants to fight with me. Isaac Cruz is coming off a big win, having secured an 8th round TKO victory over Rolando Raleigh Romero, a fight that bolstered his reputation and secured his WBA title. In contrast, Valenzuela, his next opponent, gained attention with a spectacular 6th round knockout against Chris Colbert in a December rematch. But it gets even more interesting from here. Devin Haney also recently shared his thoughts on Cruz's performance and expressed a strong interest in a future fight with the WBA 140-pound champion. On social media, Haney hinted to His Excellency Turki al Alshik, a prominent figure in the boxing world, that he was interested in a unification match against Cruz. Haney praised Cruz's tenacity and relentless style in the ring, noting that Cruz's ability to maintain pressure on his opponents makes him a formidable fighter. However, Haney also pointed out some areas where he believes Cruz could improve. Pitbull has a lot of heart and fights with a lot of aggression, Haney said. For sure he's going to win against Valenzuela, but he tends to leave himself open at times, and that's something I've noticed in his fights. He's got power, but he can be predictable with his punches. Despite these criticisms, Haney acknowledged that Cruz's strengths outweigh his weaknesses, making him a tough competitor for anyone in the division. The look at the bodywork by Isaac Cruz to start the night. Ripping shots. Isaac Cruz day drops Magdaleno on a heavy right hand. Haney's interest in fighting Cruz is interesting, especially considering his recent performance against Ryan Garcia, where he suffered a loss by decision. Haney is looking to rebound and sees a fight with Cruz as an opportunity to prove himself. 
I respect Cruz and what he's accomplished, Haney said. A fight with him would be a great challenge, and I think it would be an exciting match for the fans. However, there are some complications surrounding Haney's desire for a unification bout. Cruz is already scheduled to defend his WBA title against Jose Rayo Valenzuela on August 3rd at the BMO Stadium in Los Angeles. Moreover, Haney has a mandatory WBC title defense due against Sandor Martin, a commitment he postponed to fight Garcia. This situation raises questions about whether Haney can realistically secure a fight with Cruz without first fulfilling his obligations with Martin. <laughs> Haney's recent loss to Garcia, where he was dropped six times, has also raised concerns about his readiness to face a power puncher like Cruz. Critics argue that Haney should focus on rebuilding his confidence and skill set against less formidable opponents before stepping into the ring with someone of Cruz's caliber. The fight against Garcia highlighted Haney's struggles with holding and clinching, tactics that some believe he used excessively to survive the bout. For a potential fight with Cruz, a strict referee might be necessary to ensure fair play and limit excessive holding. <laughs> Additionally, the weight disparity between the two fighters poses another challenge. Haney, standing at 5'8", would likely have a significant size advantage over the 5'4", Tayyid Sears Cruz. To level the playing field, a rehydration clause might be needed to prevent Haney from gaining too much weight after the weigh-in, which could give him an unfair advantage in terms of size and strength. While almost everyone is predicting a win for Cruz, Jose Rayo Valenzuela is full of confidence as he prepares to face his opponent. The 25-year-old Valenzuela has been vocal about his intentions, predicting that he will knock out Cruz in the bout. Valenzuela has made bold statements in the lead-up to the fight, confidently predicting that he will knock out Cruz. This prediction seems to have caused a stir, as Valenzuela noted that Cruz declined to shake his hand, possibly due to the knockout forecast. When the kickoff press conference uh, started and he didn't want to shake your hand, you know, he, he said in an interview it was because of, of something that you said about him in the past, but when that particular incident happened, did it kind of throw you off? Um, it didn't, uh, it didn't really throw me off. I feel good, I'm ready to fight, I'm ready to get in there and showcase my skills, Valenzuela said in an interview with Little Giant Boxing. I'm tapering down the weight so I'm feeling faster, I was going up in weight putting on muscle, I'm bringing it back down and everything is where it should be. Valenzuela's surprise at Cruz's reaction underscores a broader cultural difference in how fighters approach pre-fight promotions. He suggested that Cruz might not fully grasp the promotional tactics often used in the US, where fighters frequently predict knockouts to build hype and draw interest. I believe he said it because I said I was going to knock him out, Valenzuela explained, referring to Cruz's apparent displeasure. He emphasized that making bold predictions is part of the sports promotional landscape and not meant to be taken personally. We're fighters, and that's what we do. Let's not act like little girls, Valenzuela added, pointing out that such statements are standard fare in boxing. Valenzuela expressed respect for Cruz, acknowledging his skill and strength. However, he remains confident in his ability to win, particularly through a knockout. He's a hell of a fighter. I have nothing but respect for Pitbull, but do I think I can knock him out? Yeah, does he think he can knock me out? Probably, Valenzuela said, maintaining a balanced yet assertive stance. Effective pressure. Pitbull. The psychological aspect of the fight cannot be ignored. Valenzuela's comments suggest that Cruz might be feeling some insecurity, especially given the predictions favoring Valenzuela, including those from prominent figures like promoter Eddie Hearn. I think I'm gonna hurt him. I don't see myself not hurting him. It's going to be a clash. I have everything to fire back too, Valenzuela confidently stated. This mental edge, combined with his physical preparation, positions Valenzuela as a formidable challenger. It's gonna be a hell of a fight. Yeah, I can't wait, dude. Like, are, I don't know. Are you like as hyped as we are for this? Yeah, I'm ready. I, I'm, I'm hyped. It's gonna be a good ass fight. Valenzuela's recent performance has boosted his confidence. He is coming off a decisive victory over Chris Colbert, securing a sixth round knockout in their December rematch. This win not only broke a two fight losing streak, but also showcased Valenzuela's resilience and capability to perform under pressure. I've got a jab. I've got footwork. 
I got speed, I got power, and I got skills. Everybody's gonna have to tune in on August 3rd, he emphasized, highlighting the attributes he believes will be crucial in the fight against Cruz. A victory for Valenzuela could open the door to significant opportunities in the light welterweight division. A potential rematch with Cruz could be on the cards, but other high-profile matchups may also emerge. Valenzuela could also find himself facing other notable fighters such as Liam Paro, Devin Haney, or Teofimo Lopez, further elevating his status in the sport. Well, who do you think comes out with the win? Share your thoughts below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.